Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And hold up in a bunker deep below the earth, I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up today, Dan, uh, it's it's that season. It's Easter and Passover, wow. right? All, all these, you know, so many, religious So many important things. religious holidays all yeah. coming up together. Yeah, and so we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about those two and kind of uh we, we, yeah we're just gonna we're gonna we don't ruin just both of them for you pass over them <laughs> okay well let's move on <laughs> okay do that N- no reaction let's move on <laughs> all right um well Dan yeah uh one thing that I actually was impressed last last week and the week prior. Uh-huh. Uh, not that there was much else to talk about than the COVID <laughs> thing, but we actually did not talk about Mormon General Conference, which is just, we always talk about <laughs> General Conference, right? And for everybody who doesn't know, if you're maybe you're new to the show, General Conference is a twice yearly, um, 10 hour long snooze fest held oh by God. the by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It is a, uh, the it Mormons. is designed to torture and or <laughs> I, it's kind of like one of those things where it's a brainwash of some sort. Yeah. It's you know a very at the very end Jean-Luc Picard has to yell that there are four lights but he actually sees five. <laughs> right. Um anyway, 10 hours spread out over 2 days uh with two hour sessions and two hour breaks between like it's 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 a marathon uh service of sorts mm. it's really just like speech fest and like boring spe- like oh, these speeches like terrible talks given by <laughs> old men just with the occasional woman on like there'll be a woman maybe in one or two of the sessions right normally no Yes. that's very very new that is very is that very new? new well our that's entire what doing. childhood there was not a, <laughs> unless it was the woman's there, there's one uh seg- section that's just for the yeah. ladies <laughs> for the it's ladies. ladies night well six uh, months ago at the last general conference yeah uh president of the church a man by the name of russell m nelson we call him rusty he uh he announced that this that this most recent general conference was going to be that this one that just happened uh was going to be the uh a general conference unlike any they had ever seen before the oh, mormons one, the, their one heads for the were just books, going baby. to they were just going to blow off right yeah uh and, and you know and there was something that, that sort of coincided with this general conference which is <laughs> it was the 200th uh anniversary of joseph smith um, making up a lie about <laughs> seeing God, right? Right. Um, well, the, they call it the first vision. Yeah. And there are multiple accounts that differ from each other about like what nine this first or something, right? Like what, there, like yeah. There's so many different versions of it, which he um, himself told to different people, right? Uh, but the the one that they finally settled on, the one that is canon now, uh, apparently that took place 200 years ago this year exactly and and that's sort of the jumping off point for uh this whole thing he yeah. Jim, so rusty nelson announced on the sat during one of the saturday sessions that the morning session on sunday was going to be a solemn assembly <laughs> right boy they sure know how to sell us a, a meeting right a so that's great assembly. well you know i mean what is this th- what is this going to be and you've heard the term before if you if you're more if you grow up mormon you know you but you haven't you haven't really account encountered too many of them right uh-huh. a solemn assembly like why would they oh my god <laughs> normally a solemn assembly would be for maybe like um enthroning a new like president of the church mm. right or uh, if they were going to introduce some new scripture Ooh. or something like that, or maybe even like for the dedication of like um, a new a new temple, right? right? And they would call these solemn assemblies. And it's customary at a solemn assembly to do something called 
the Hosanna shout. <laughs> now, this is all sounding really exciting, right? Like it's like, oh my god, they're having a solemn assembly. They're going to do a Hosanna shout. This is like, this is like not once in a lifetime type stuff, but this is rare, right? Yeah, and it's exciting, and Mormons are getting all worked up um, <laughs> to do a Hosanna shout. You have to. Um, Get yourself a little white handkerchief, right? You, you guys you and, can't imagine how stupid this is. <laughs> I have to warn everybody. I actually We're, had to do one of these. Did you know that? I did a Hosanna shout what? in my lifetime. Why? I don't temple? remember why. I think they rededicated the Salt Lake Temple or something. I and know. I went as a teenager. Okay. And uh, and I was told, bring a handkerchief. And I was like, the fuck you say? And I, so I brought a <laughs> handkerchief, which I thought was weird. A teenage boy in America does not bring a handkerchief, but uh -huh. I did. And then, uh, <laughs> please, go on and describe. Okay, so you you take this little handkerchief and you hold it from one of the corners, right? You completely <laughs> unfurl it, right? Yeah. So as as the best dan dandy in the world, you hold your little <laughs> handkerchief out in, in front of you from one corner, right? <laughs> and, um, well, and, and you sort of shake it around. Right. You, you but, wave but let, it. Let's listen to some audio. Right. Okay. This wait, is going to actually. We need to set up this audio because that, here's the thing. It's not a setup? It, well, here's what. <laughs> here's the thing. A Hosanna shout is meant to be oh, a okay, giant sure, crowd of people yeah, right. in unison shouting right. this shout. Right. But here's the thing. The COVID-19 thing ruined their general conference. Yeah. It's this... just... <laughs> Four old, old men, we're talking late 80s and early 90s to the man, uh -huh. standing up in front of nobody in a <laughs> giant fucking building with the saddest arrangement of flowers that you've ever seen in your life behind them. Well, first of all, they, this wasn't in the conference center. They made it sort of look like the conference center in close up. But this is actually over in the church office building. Oh, it um, is? Yeah, there's an auditor small auditorium over oh, there okay. that they rigged up with um, a, a fairly convincing, you know, yeah. podium that looks like the one at the, the conference center. And some, some you know, kind of rosy colored uh, wainscoting little background right. thing with some ugly flowers on top of it. And then they did a very clever thing, which is the wall above it. They lit in a very sort of uh, dark, like uh, like a blue light. So it oh. gives it a lot of depth, yeah. right? Like like you would expect to see. But anyway, I, I, <laughs> complete, I completely digress. But anyway, so this is going to be audio of, yes, Russell M. Nelson, uh, a, a completely... Out of step, um, uncoordinated Dallin H. Oaks. And then the man over the corner, I guess, would be um I don't remember his name. Oh, who is it? It's uh it's, it's I it's, don't remember. It's Jolly McJowl face, but I don't oh, yeah. remember who he is, he is. He as a human being is seventy five percent jowl. <laughs> All right, here, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. To God and the Lamb. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to God and the Lamb. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to God and the Lamb. Amen, Amen, and Amen. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> It's the saddest, most pathetic thing you've ever seen in your life. You guys, I can't tell you. Like, it's fucking weird when there's a crowd there, right? Because everybody, yeah. it looks like a whole, it looks like a whole battalion of Mormons uh, trying to uh, <laughs> surrender to you. They're all yeah. waving their white <laughs> flags back and forth trying to surrender. But at least if they're all there, there's like this sort of chorus of voices but when it's four doddering old morons going, Hosanna, Hosanna, <laughs> ho it, it's just unbelievably, uh, I, they must have felt like idiots. These three? No. <laughs> you don't no, think? No, this is sacred. It's solemn, Dan. Yeah. Now, I would say the people who did feel like idiots were the, one, were the, like, the, the teenagers at home whose parents oh, yeah. were forcing them to do this. the mormons were expected to do this in their houses at home. 
Oh At my home, god! Alone you guys, breath. it was it's... this global hosanna shout, right? Like they were so <laughs> proud of this moment, and you know for a fact, <sighs> not a single person shouted because oh, you know people did. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe some oh. people did. I mean, there were some. There were definitely like some some like parents who were working up their kids and getting them all excited to do this, and then their leader just goes. Hosanna. But like, they love this guy. They think it's his old craziness is cute. Oh my god! And you it's see that a, in the posts about this kind of stuff. It's oh, it's the saddest thing. Her. Did you tweet that video? Yeah, I did. Kind of. If you guys want to check it out, I did uh, kind of my own cut of this. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's nothing too exciting, but I put a little quirky music on it, and I have um, my own special close-ups of sort of what's happening Which, because by the because, way because rusty we're... picks up on the fact at some point in the middle of the video that down and jokes is just i mean literally waving do his it. surrender right like like <laughs> like rusty nelson's doing like this little this little punctuated little hosanna right and he'll yeah, like he's waving he'll wave on it, the rhythm right? of what he's saying and down a jokes is like he's just like uh, mm. and this is just going back and forth like, oh my god it's it is amazing. the least enthusiastic like if you want to see the opposite of enthusiasm watch that video <laughs> it's amazing the best part is we're not supposed to be saying any of this because in the lead up to the oh, hosanna shout he specifically, Rusty Nelson specifically said to the media, <laughs> of which I assume we are considered a part, sort of a bastard of stepchild. Sorts. Yeah. Uh, but he said, now, hey, you guys, this is very serious and important to us, so you're not allowed to make fun of us, okay? <laughs> which it was the course. most defensive, stupid thing I can imagine a man well, saying and before he did that. And I, to be honest, I would not have even thought to do my own little cut of it and put dumb music to it had he not said that. Right. Exactly. Like, he put the idea in my head. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Rusty. Oh my God. All right. Uh, well, that was fun. I'm going to ruin it now no. because I have some horrible news. No. Um, this has been a fucking weird ass week for anyone who likes justice. And, uh, and I'm going to actually, for this story, I'm going to talk about three different cases. The first, past, uh, Monsignor Bernard McGarty of La Crosse, Wisconsin, uh, who has been in trouble before. Uh, for At one point, he got in trouble for, for when he was like 89 years old. He was getting a massage, and he lifted uh, the sheet off of his groin area and asked the masseuse to finish him off. Which, oh. great, Father, thanks a lot. Uh, he got in trouble for that. Then he got in trouble for uh, allegedly, uh, according to a criminal complaint, um, he was talking to a woman n outside of a library and apparently hitting on her very, very uh, aggressively, trying to kiss her and eventually taking her hand and putting it on his crotch. Oh, my God. Uh, so there was a criminal complaint. He uh, was going to go to court. And then the courts decided that it's uh, it's just too hard with the COVID-19 thing happening, and they just let it go. So that, apparently, that case will not be uh, going forward. Huh. Fun. Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that great? Oh, my well, God. Well, let me keep going, then. <laughs> let me introduce you to Nason Joaquin Garcia. Mm. Uh who is the leader of a huge, like, million-member uh, megachurch called La Luz del Mundo. Oh, yeah, I uh, love that one. Yeah, the light of the world uh, yeah. in Mexico. They are crazy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he was arrested in California uh, a few months ago and was being charged with uh, all kinds of things, including human trafficking, uh, child sex abuse. Oh, my God. Uh, and and apparently the evidence is strong. They had a great case. Uh, it was everything was going swimmingly until the jackass uh, uh, prosecutors took too long in doing some of their stuff, and somehow that was so wrong. They 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 bungled it so badly that a judge has thrown that case out of court because uh, because 
on uh, just on that technicality that uh, the criminal pre preliminary hearing was not held in time. <sighs> so okay. that's real, real fun. And then the highest profile one of them all, Cardinal Pell. Uh, George Pell was uh, last August was denied an appeal in his sex abuse conviction. He had been convicted of sex abuse mm. uh, and and denied an appeal. Uh, he w went to jail. Everything was right with the world. But, of course, he was going to appeal to the highest court in the land, which I think in Australia is called the high court. Mm. Um, and it went to the high court. And the high court decided that because the jury uh, – couldn't the high court just decided that the jury couldn't have found him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt because it was his word against this uh anonymous to us um uh testifier who hmm. was his victim mm -hmm. there were other victims but they weren't coming forth this victim was the this guy was the only person to testify well the other one's dead yeah that that's right yeah uh and uh, the jury found it absolutely credible and more than enough to convict uh the appellate court decided not to accept it but the high court said nope that wasn't enough evidence we decided the juries don't matter anymore fuck wow. the world and they let him go jesus christ so there you go uh <sighs> Everybody, look, if you wear a collar that looks different from everybody else's collar, you get to do all the, all the murdering, all, uh, well, not murdering, probably, may, probably murdering. You could probably you get do to do it. All, Why the, not? all the molestation that you want. It's a get out of jail free card, fucking mm. literally. Jesus Christ. Well, Dan. Yeah. It's an incredible segue into uh, my next story. Ooh. If you're, if you're done. Yeah, I'm uh, sure. I'm so sick. I, I, I'm glad to be done with it. Okay. Well, um, just uh, just to add on, Dan. Uh -huh. Um, apparently, um, in the wake of uh, the Cardinal Pell stuff, mm -hmm. um, within just a, uh, I think a day or two of that, uh, Pope Francis offered his morning mass. Uh, for those who suffer from unjust sentences. Oh my God. <laughs> I would like to pray today for all those people who suffer unjust sentences resulting <sighs> from intransigence against them. Oh my God. <laughs> That's going to lead into a uh, sort of the uh, response on the street um, in Melbourne, Australia. Sure. Um, af after um essentially i guess the not not officially an acquittal but where um george pell's you know being left let off the hook mm. um the uh, um the the saint patrick's cathedral in melbourne um was vandalized um mm. with the words uh rotten hell and no justice um painted onto the doors of the cathedral Sure. Um, which this is the um, the cathedral that also, uh, I guess George Pell. Um, this is, I guess, where that's his the home choir, turf. The choir boys um, uh, back in the nineties were um, molest uh, allegedly, I guess we should say, uh, molested. Um, and uh, yeah, so also the words um, uh, the law protects the powerful were also spray painted uh, yeah. on the cathedral forecourt. Um, and then over at the Carmelite Monastery, which is where uh, George Pell uh, was staying, um, a child's tricycle was fixed to the gate. Um, and let's see, a bunch oh, of... I like that. That's yeah, actually a nice right? little... Yeah. And then I, I, mean, I can't tell. It looks like um, shoelaces or some string or something was also tied up there in kind of a... Uh, statement making way i guess hmm. um, I, I hope they fucking welded it to the gate and welded it shut <laughs> i know right um yeah so um but here's the deal uh cardinal pell doesn't want to really be sticking around in melbourne obviously no um, but he also really can't uh you know get out of 
get out of the country at the moment. So he's holed <laughs> up in uh, Sydney now. Oh. Um, and uh, But he can't get himself back to Rome for a while. Uh, thanks to international travel bans. Right. Um, and you know what? Even if he could, his old position has already been filled. So um, yeah, he's, he's not going to be returning back to his role as the Vatican treasurer uh, anytime soon. Can I just say, by the way, lest anyone think that we're being unfair to this guy, that maybe he didn't actually commit the crime of which he was convicted and then over that conviction overturned, mm -hmm. his own lawyer... Not in the courtroom, but I think talking to, to the press was so crazy about things that literally at one point he said that he, he was complaining to the press that his client was guilty of, quote, no more than plain van vanilla sexual penetration uh, where the child is not actively participating. Oh, is that all? That's it. You guys, why are we even mad about it? <laughs> God. It was just, it was just so vanilla. Unbelievably, yeah. I mean, if that doesn't amount to his own lawyer admitting that he did the thing, I don't know what the fuck we're doing here. Yeah, and also... But he didn't do it in court. <laughs> also, so. um, I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody should be looking into that lawyer and some of his activities. Right? <laughs> like if he's like, Horrifying. Oh, that's, that's nothing. You should see what I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am a monster compared to this guy. <laughs> God. Uh, fucking disgusting. Well, okay, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to take us now. Uh, I think we talked about it. Jerry Falwell Jr., J. Falju. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the head of uh, Liberty University. Yeah. And he was determined that Liberty was not going to close just because of some stupid old virus that's probably just a conspiracy by the Democrats anyway. <laughs> So, I, he resisted Unreal. for... What's that? Unreal. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... Some, anyway, proceed. Yeah. Absolutely uh, ridiculous. Uh, he... So, he reopened his school, and, of course, the press was there to cover this, because that's some bullshit, boneheaded nonsense, and, uh, and they wanted some pictures, they wanted to cover it, they wanted to interview some of the students that were coming back, etc. Uh-huh. Well... He is firing back, baby. Oh. He has uh he has gotten gone out and gotten warrants signed by Sergeant Alan Wilkins of the Liberty University Police Department for a New York Times uh reporter or a uh, photographer and a ProPublica reporter. What? Who both apparently went on to Liberty's uh campus during that time to uh to take pictures and talk to people. Uh, these are trespassing warrants. Oh my god! So, <laughs> fighting back, baby. You can't keep a good man down. Trespassers, you! How dare you report on this? I'm gonna get you. <laughs> this guy, this this man has the ear of our president. Oh, no let kidding, me let no. me just point that out. He has White House credentials. He can he can, yeah. This, it's, it, he's a bad man. He's a bad, bad man. Oh, my God. All right, Dan. Yeah. Well, coronavirus mm. and the Pope, Dan. The, the Pope has something to say. He, 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 has, <laughs> he has sort of a, a theory about the coronavirus. Oh, th those are always good. His he, th he, I mean, of all of the Popes recently, he's the most sciencey, so... Well, I can't wait to hear it. I'm sure he's well. going to come come down on the right side of this one for sure. <laughs> well, unfortunately, this is the kind of argument that um, it, it's one of those where you sort of agree with the uh, what's the 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 end of it, right? But you don't okay. agree with how they got there. Right? Okay. Um, or maybe not even that. Anyway, he says that uh, the, the coronavirus pandemic is uh, nature's response to humans ignoring the current ecological crisis. So while I might <laughs> want, I appreciate him drawing attention, right, yeah. to the fact that, yeah, the, we've got some problems. The planet's warming <laughs> at an alarming rate. Uh, but this whole, like, come on. Come on, well, nature's response. I like, just love like nature I, has a like is sort of aware. 
of, of what's going on, and it's like, mm, okay, you know what we need to do? We need everybody <laughs> to sit at home for a while. Um, he says, um, he says that the outbreak has offered an opportunity to slow down the rate of production and consumption, and to <laughs> learn to understand and contemplate the natural world. Listen, uh. I think that's amazing. Look, I have been doing, I have been researching and see, reading quote after quote of like, you know, Israeli health ministers saying that it's a that that coronavirus is God's wrath come down on us for gay pride parades and blah right. blah blah. Which he, by the way, that guy got got coronavirus, which is so funny. <laughs> um, but like, for for any religious leader at all. To say something like, hey, we should take care of our environment instead of, hey, God, this is God's wrath or whatever. I'm, I'll like, take it. Well, it's more I'm like, gonna take it. it's more like it's, uh, you know, punishment on all of us rather than some specific group. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Which I guess, okay. I mean, if you're going to look for like a positive spin on this whole thing, um, <laughs> he says, we did not respond to the partial catastrophes. Who now speaks of the fires in Australia? Or remembers the, <laughs> that 18 months ago, a boat could cross the North Pole because the glaciers had all melted. Who speaks now of the floods? <laughs> I don't know if these are the revenge of nature, but they are certainly nature's responses. He's, he's not even talking about God. No. He doesn't even care about God. He's, uh, suddenly he's a nature guy. Yeah. That's interesting. And I, I don't like that. Like, I don't. <laughs> that makes me crazy. It's a little Stay in your lane. It's a little woo woo for the for yeah. the, for the Pope. You know. Um, <laughs> and he also, I mean, you know, like this is the problem with the, this guy, right? Because he also go went on, and this is this doesn't have anything to do with coronavirus, but he also warned against the rise of populist politicians. Uh, who he said are giving speeches reminiscent of Hitler in 1933 and others who are focusing solely on the economy. Yeah. Right? I guess that's He's not a little, wrong there either. A little coronavirus -y. But like, 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 he gets to the right place a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. How he gets there, and uh, a lot of times, sometimes, <laughs> right? Um, right? And how he gets there, uh, I guess we don't have to quibble too much about, but like, yeah. I'm going to. I quibble. <laughs> I'm choosing to quib right now. Sure. Sure. Why not? I, I, this guy, I think he's an atheist. I don't think he believes a word of it. I think I, I think he knows that he has to say a whole bunch of Jesus stuff and he has to like do all the, go through all the motions and everything, but I don't think he believes it. I think he's, uh, he's actually out there trying to try, trying to reconcile the real world with the wacky costume drama that he has to be a part of all right all right well i am i i got one last thing it is a light little moment but i just took such pleasure in it uh we have seen all across this idiotic country of ours so many instances of churches proving their 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 uh, valiant uh belief in their lord and savior by meeting against all reason logic and in many cases against direct uh, orders from their states or at least heavy suggestions from their states to not meet in large numbers or in any numbers really and we've seen the problem with it uh in multiple states we have seen uh made like big outbreaks of the coronavirus happening mm -hmm. and being traced back to church meetings. Yeah. So it is very nice to read about one church uh, in California uh, where the pastor was insisting that he was going to hold in person church services. Uh, pastor John Duncan was 100% uh, going to do it at the, at the Cross Culture Christian Ch Center in Lodi, California. Lodi. Y okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Lodi, California. Why do you pronounce it that way? Because it's anyway, California. Uh, so there they were. Uh, they were all, all set to do it. And finally, uh, it, w it was pissing everybody off. Uh, one person had the power to stop it, however, and that was the landlord 
who changed the locks amazing. and said, "Nope, not gonna do it." Absolutely amazing. <laughs> oh, it was the it, yeah? It was it was. So there you go. The uh, the landlord part of the Bethel Open Bible Church uh, blocked them. So, nice. That's that's awesome. There there are some small heroes uh, in the world. <laughs> And I think that is amazing. Just, oh, you want to come to church? Fuck you. You're locked out. There's no church today. Go home. Everybody go the fuck home. Oh, God. Oh, poor Christians, though. It's fucking Easter. Oh. What are they supposed to do? Oh, it's it, very and, and, sad. And really, what is the church supposed to do? This is the one, like, of the two reliable services of the entire year. Where they right. can expect people to show up and really dish out the money, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they pass that plate around. This, uh, this is like Black Friday for most of them. Oh, my God. All yeah. right. Well, there you go. It's a tough time for everybody. Uh, so anyway, listen, if you guys have uh, anything you'd like to say about any of these uh, stories, please write into us, podcast at thinkautomatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yep. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist, and smash that like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It is a closed group, but we will let you in. Also, uh, follow us on Twitter at TGI, yeah. TGI Atheist. Yeah, search us out on uh, Snapchat. We're not there, but you can look. <laughs> More to come, guys. Hey, Dan. Hey. Uh, you know, like sometimes there's a voice that you just need to hear during a moment of crisis. You know, <laughs> so like the only voice the, of reason that we'll ever yeah, need. The there's missing voice, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one that's going to make you feel the best about everything, put everything right in the world. And we're not um, going to have that voice with us forever. So no, we need to I take know. advantage. It's so sad. It's so sad. Well, we so can. old. So old, <laughs> Mr. Pat Robertson. Um, he has finally weighed in, finally, um, on the whole COVID 19 stuff. Yeah, we've been waiting for him. Um, and uh, he has something to say directly to COVID 19. Do you realize what's happened? This is an inert virus, and we have cowered before this inert virus. It has, caused, it has destroyed our economy. Uh, it has put panic into our entire population. Uh, it's disrupting all of our uh, way of living, and it is closing the churches of Jesus Christ, and people are not able to go and worship together in their churches because of this bug. And I think it's time for the church to go on the attack. Instead of just cowering in our uh, cars and in our social distancing, I think it's time that we stand up and speak the Word of God and command that thing to leave us. We have authority in the name of Jesus Christ as His servants. And the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that I'll hear their prayer and forgive their sin and heal their land. And I believe it's time that we speak out boldly and in all the churches coming into Easter in this Holy Week, I think it's time in every congregation, instead of saying, oh, we're going to be COVID sensitive, we're going to catch something, let's rebuke this thing in the name of Jesus. And I want you to pray with me right now. I just believe it's time to go on the attack. We are not supposed to be fearful. Fear not, God said. I'm with you. I'm going to deliver you. And we serve the God of heaven, and he's certainly greater than a little bug. And this is an inert virus that is terrifying and destroying the whole economy and the society that we live in. And let's not take it anymore. Let's not take it anymore. And I want you to pray in your churches, every church, Instead of you covering yourself and, and huddling and all that stuff, speak out. Pastors, every one of you in, in your churches, declare it. Declare the victory in the name of Jesus.
So I ask you right now, as we begin this program, you pray with me at this moment. We're going to rebuke this thing. We do not have to cow before an inert virus. Whoever heard of such a thing, this is, we're God's people. And this is a bug that is terrorizing our entire population. We can't let it happen. All the people, all the pastors, all across America, in your services, even if you have to speak in FM radio or speak to cars or whatever you do, declare it boldly. And I want you to pray with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you as the author of life, as the creator of all life. Lord, this is your universe. This is your world. And your people, God, have been terrorized by this inert virus. And so we come in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and we rebuke this thing. And we command it to leave our society and our land. And by the day of Easter, that there will be no more new cases of this coronavirus. In the name of Jesus, we speak that. And we declare it done in his name. Amen. amen and amen. I'm glad he got that second amen in there. Right? Oh, that, my that's God. That's important. In a good, mm. Any good rebuking needs an and amen, not yeah, just an Yeah, you can't just stop with one amen. <laughs> the, let me tell you something. Uh, I love that, A, he insists on the inertness of this virus. That as is in that no means, way inert. Well, I mean... I think he's hanging on to the idea that viruses themselves are kind of an inert thing. They like they they're not alive in the strictest sense of I, sure. I don't know. Biologists have these ideas about about it, but he heard somebody say that it was inert, and he has just glommed onto that idea. And I think he thinks it means it's harmless. I think that's what he thinks it means. Yeah, but clearly know. not. Although right? although. Then he goes ahead and speaks to it. He yells at it. So you tell me, is it inert or is it something that you need to yell at? Uh, you, it's you probably make... not the first time he's yelled at something that's not there. So, <laughs> Oh, it's there. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Can't hear him. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, I know. He's, um... oh, God. Well, thank God it's handled. And yeah, all I no. can say is I'm so grateful for all of these so many televangelists and pastors uh -huh. and people who have uh, made it go away, yeah. effectively made it go away by praying it away. And now by Easter, when, Dan, when we yeah, we, we know for a fact that it's going to be gone. And if it's not, well, then wait, does that mean that he's not real? That I, God you know isn't... what? You know what? Um, I after Easter. And there's uh -huh. new cases because, of course, there will be. Right. Um, I want. We need to pen a very sincere sounding letter <laughs> to his questions and answers, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and just be like, "I heard you rebuke it, and I believed it." Right. Yeah. What and do I, went I out do without now? A mask. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have it. Now Damn got you, it. Pat Robertson. Why why didn't you tell us that it was bullshit that it wasn't going to work that it wasn't I inert. believed you <laughs> I think it's amazing to people I, I I can't decide whether I think people actually believe this or because you know there's that lady there's that that viral video of that lady who is determined that she can't get the virus cuz she's covered in Jesus's blood and whatever Oh god But like I don't know like so she probably, I'm sure some people believe it, but most people, when they hear Pat Robertson or some televangelist say out loud, I'm making it go away in Jesus' name. I'm going to, we're going to make it go away. They all know, oh yeah, that's not going to happen. It's sad. Don't you think they, don't you think they want to believe it though? Oh, they want to. It's just like, uh, they don't. Like what? How, how do you how do you deal with that? You're like a true believer, <laughs> right? Like no, I'm serious. Like I know. How, how do you keep going? I just I, Pat I, Robertson. Like if he can't rebuke it, yeah. What does that mean? It's a uh, well. What's great is that it 
happens so often he, that it, yeah. they don't have to worry about what it means. It's just a thing <laughs> that happens. Maybe rebuke doesn't mean what we think it means. <laughs> He said it. He said he was going to. Anyway. All right. Uh, we had some folks write into us. Or actually just one. Uh, an unsigned email from a biologist listener who says, mm. it looks like all the prayers about Corona are not working as the numbers keep rapidly climbing unabated. Uh. I'm thinking they need to be more specific. I think oh. this is very smart. Okay. Uh, there are many coronaviruses out there. The oh. virus is COVID-19, acronym of Coronavirus Disease 2019. Mm -hmm. So use that name. Then mm. we need to look at exactly what we are asking for. Mm. The virus is spread through the air, so praying for it to have increased density, higher protein com com component would reduce <laughs> transmission. So that's good. Uh, then there's infectivity. The virus infects by SARS-CoV-2 spike S. Uh, gly glycoprotein on its surface binding to the epithelial cells antig antigiotensin converting enzyme 2, yeah. which is ACE2, membrane, membrane protein. So, praying for targeted mutations in exons coding for the bi binding domain <laughs> in the genes for either of those proteins may be the trick. <laughs> or... A single virus particle in a cell does not really do much to damage do much damage if it cannot replicate. Covs are enveloped positive are enveloped positive stranded RNA viruses with nucleocapsid with a nucleocapsid. Mm -hmm. Its tran its transcription works through the replication transcription complex organized in double membrane vesicles and via the synthesis of subgenomic RNA sequences. A frame shift between ORF1A <laughs> and ORF1B guides the pro the production of both PP1A and PP1AB polypeptides nice. that are processed by virally encoded uh, chymo trypsin like protease or main protease as well as one or uh, one or two papain like proteases for producing 16 non-structural proteins so that pay praying for targeted mutations that alter any of those processes would reduce or eliminate viral load i mean that's just obvious actually i <laughs> obviously we all knew that but some of those processes are needed for basic cellular function, so any intervention should be solely toward viral genes. Yeah, get specific. I I like this approach. You know, I think yeah. this is a strong approach. Let's, I did edit that a little bit song. because uh, there were even more words that I can't pronounce in that <laughs> email. But but let's forward the song to the right people, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and 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 our our listener wrote. Uh, to, to summarize, said, now I've been in church a lot in my life, but I'm a biologist, so I think we need the, the, the theologians out there to strategize about which mechanism should be lifted up and coordinate efforts. <laughs> I no, I just want to hear uh, Cindy Jacobs try to tackle all those words. <laughs> she, she would do a really good job. She, I, well, I mean, I feel like I sounded like I was speaking in tongues just there, so I feel like maybe maybe that's what she's doing. Maybe we just don't understand her technical uh, words. Oh, my goodness. Um, hey, did we have anybody to thank this week? We do indeed. Um, yeah, we have, uh, we have two new patrons over Hooray. on Patreon. Um, we have Thomas, who's a new venerable listener. Ooh. Thank you, Thomas. Thank and you. we have Thomas, who's a beatified <laughs> listener. Wow. Thank you, two Thomas. Thomases. Two Thomases in one week. Um, thank you so much for your support. Um, you know, what, the, what these two Thomases did is they went to thankgodimatheist.com, clicked on the support tab, and then followed the link over to Patreon. There is currently an unlisted on Patreon on the Patreon page. You're not going to see it, but there's currently on offer a an extra reward. No, there. It's I put it on there today. Oh, um, okay. It's, it actually it's... will tell you, and it will collect your address because if you sign up now, right, for to be a, new for a limited time and limited supplies, um, we will <laughs> our thank you to any new patron is we will send you a roll of toilet paper. Of oh, toilet paper, that's right. It's individually uh, it's... wrapped. It's going to have some original artwork on it. 
Uh, it's worth its weight in gold right now <laughs> in, in this world, and we're we're sending it out to you. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, it's it, our it's way of our, saying thanks. Our way of saying our thanks. Extra way of saying thanks because there's other cool things you can get as well. It's true. And then, of course, as always, Dan, our top donor, our Lord and Savior, Davis. Hooray! Uh, y'all are amazing. We thank you so much to all all of our patrons. Uh, if you can't afford to be a patron right now, we totally understand. Go give us five stars on any of the places where you can do that. And uh, and thanks to all of you. And uh, more to come. Dan. Oh my gosh. Oh my, I, there was no reason to really like Easter, in my opinion, as a kid. What? Except for maybe some candy. You got some candy. Yeah. It's right? a candy, it's a candy one. That's the awesome one. Yeah, but then there's like, it's so churchy. It's mm-hmm. like Sunday dress, all day crap. Yeah. Um, Easter eggs, which seem like they should be cool, right? <laughs> like, everybody works it up. Uh, you know your parents are all excited about it they tell you how cool it is and then you go out and the great prize is you're finding hard-boiled eggs like what <laughs> which, kid doesn't which is just not, <laughs> it's not a treat that. no yeah, it's not exactly. a treat right you're given candy in the morning and then hard-boiled eggs in the afternoon and it's just it's a little confusing <laughs> um oh, and i was not is- not a fan desperately confusing as a as a holiday uh <laughs> It is the most co- co- because here's the thing, it's all bunnies and little and chocolate and yeah. candy and chocolate eggs and then real eggs, but they're colorful and it's bright and it's colorful and also let me tell you the story of a murder. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell it to you probably in gruesome detail. Yeah, because today is the day we celebrate murder. <laughs> So, like, I have sat there horrified while my in-laws watch a movie that is essentially a snuff film about Jesus Christ being tortured, bloodied, murdered. Like, like, literally, they put it, like, yeah, it's torture. Yeah. You know, you watch two hours of torture porn, and then it's like, Are they watching the... (laughs) Are they watching the uh, Mel Gibson one? I don't know what they were watching. I, d- I literally one, like that one's bloody. Yeah, I don't think it was that one. But it was, and it was one that was like sub- Like they were letting these kids, they were letting their children watch this, and I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you people? Yeah, why would you let children watch this? It's and and then and then of course, yay! He's a, he's he's risen. He's a zombie now. Hooray! <laughs> but. It's just it's it's such a disconnect for me. Yeah. As a kid growing up, I couldn't I couldn't ever wrap my head around it. My parents have fortunately didn't hit the the Jesus stuff hard at all. We just had fun with the candy and stuff, but <laughs> man, it's some intense shit when somebody actually wants their kid to know about Jesus and stuff. It is it is the mixedest of messages that I can imagine. <laughs> Yeah, in terms of that, but that is not the only uh, major religious holiday of this week, mm. uh, oh, because yeah. we just passed over Passover, which <laughs> is uh, a beautiful, beautiful celebration of when God killed all of their children, but not all of ours. So suck it, Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It's gruesome. It is literally horrifying. This yeah. is the celebration of when all of the Hebrews uh, and man, I don't know when the last time was that you read the account of, of Exodus. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever read Exodus. I have. It Been a while. doesn't make any sense. At no time in any of that book does anything make sense. It's including things like God continually hardening Pharaoh's heart. Not Pharaoh hardened his heart. Hmm. God hardens Pharaoh's heart so that he's mean, 
so that he so that then God can send another plague. Over and over again this happens and then the final plague, the most important one, the one that we're celebrating on Passover mm-hmm. by eating dumb food <laughs> is that yes, all of the Hebrews they smear lamb's blood on their door. Uh-huh. And the evil or or not the evil, God's power skips their house and only kills the firstborn of the houses that don't have that. Now, yeah. to my mind, that is what you would call mass murder of children. But you know, worth celebrating, I guess, if you're not if your kid wasn't killed. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's kind of no wonder that uh a a a sort of a devil uh character had to be created in <laughs> to kind of balance this whole thing out because like (laughs) because like you're right like what god is going around and doing is evil right yeah like it is not what a good uh and benevolent god would do in any way shape or form it's 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 a horror it would be and how awful to have to then worship this entity right after after it goes around doing absolutely horrifying things yeah but don't unreal. worry unreal of course you're going to want to worship him you, after all of this is said and done you get to go and wander the desert for 40 years so <laughs> that's get excited prize. everybody <laughs> have some fun are you guys ready for this <gasps> oh my god why <laughs> why oh and of course uh the jews uh, not to be outdone. Now the Christians, yeah, they're getting all the candy, they're getting uh, chocolate, all that fun stuff. But also they're getting the stupid eggs. No, the, the the Jewish people, they're really doing it up. They got flavorless bread, uh, matzo. <laughs> that's great, delicious, and uh, they got bitter herbs. I think they're supposed to eat. You got to remember eat all the, the bitter herbs. Yeah, you got to the gotta bitter. Eat your bitter. <laughs> I think there's something about you have to wash your hands the right way, and I can't. Uh, I, I wish I remembered yeah. what it all. What there all is it like was. the nice thing about drinking a cup of wine, but I think it's supposed to be Jewish wine, which I don't know if you've had Manischewitz, but it's whoa, ooh, it's <laughs> not good. <laughs> Isn't it like crazy sweet? It's like yeah, it's insanely yeah. sweet. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, there that's you not go. my thing. I I, I prefer. A nice dry, dry wine. <laughs> well, you get That's you get sweet wine and dry crackers. How about that? <laughs> That's where your dry comes in. <laughs> so there you go. It's a uh, it's it's a weird time for the religious people out there. They are celebrating some really really crazy shit. Yeah, but they really want to do it. Like like they're going nuts that they can't have their Easter stuff. Right? Oh yeah! Like this is making them fucking crazy. Like I never knew anybody actually really liked Easter that much. Right? Like, yeah. Like it's I mean, because Mormons, it's it's there. You kind of do, but Mormons don't really know what to do with it. To be honest, right? Yeah. Like it's true. Like <laughs> it, it, Easter is just kind of a weird thing. It, they 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 know they're kind of Christian, so they kind of have to do something with it. But they're <laughs> but they are like you talk about like. Like your in-laws being, you know, just kind of oblivious to, you know, the, all the blood and everything and and whatnot, but like, they don't like to, you, I don't know. I don't think Mormons usually dwell in that stuff too much. No, most don't. I don't think. I mean, I guess Easter is a celebration of the resurrection. They love talking about the resurrection. Oh boy. You can't shut them up about it. But, but again, like without like pomp and like ceremony and this and that mormons are just kind of like well let's give a talk about jesus today yeah and that's about that's about all you get there are no special good hymns do you remember any good hymns uh what were they yeah was there a good easter hymn i mean good you're asking me if there was a good (laughs) easter hymn or if there was a frequent easter hymn because i remember that there are some hymns that were associated he is risen uh, he is yeah Yeah, I guess yeah, that's, that's true. Sort of thing. Yeah, hmm. But but yeah, I, I don't do? know about good music. Uh, 
But like I, Easter hats, do more Mormons do in, in Utah? Did they do like Easter hats? Not really. Although I'm aware of the phenomenon, and actually, one of my uh, sisters in law does actually and en- really enjoy wearing an Easter hat. Okay, to church. it's the only time you will see a more a hat in a Mormon church. Right. Uh, but yes, and only ladies. Yeah. Well, what is up with Easter hats? Do you know why? I don't. Why I don't, a hat? I, I, it's I'd, so weird. I think you'd have to go to the south to to find the origin of that, or maybe to England. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, lots of questions. Well, there you go. Not a lot of answers. <laughs> it's just it. Look, I want to. Here's what I want. I want to hear from our listeners. I want to hear if they had a horrifying Easter slash Passover experience, or if it all felt so normal that they didn't even notice that they were celebrating something atrociously awful uh so please <laughs> if that's the case for you write into us podcast at thank god i'm atheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail message the telephone number is 424-666-8442 yeah oh uh before i get to the to the facebook don't forget we we're still gonna do we're gonna oh, do yeah. the uh the, the zoom thing uh we've got a whole bunch of responses we are uh, we're doing it uh, on Tuesday. So if you're hearing this before Tuesday, uh, you can write into us still and email us podcast at thankautomatheist.com with Zoom in the uh, in the uh, subject line. subject line, and uh, and we'll try and get out the uh, the information to you. Otherwise, I think we're going to do another one pretty soon. Um, but yes, do go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist. Click the like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge or request to join. Uh, it's a great online community. Uh, it's a closed group, though, so you got to request it. Yep, it's true. Speaking of Facebook, thanks so much to Mackenzie for all of her hard work on the Facebook page. Thanks to Danny and Amy for being moderators in the Members Only Lounge. And a big thanks goes out to the Red Rock hot club for the use of their music and to gordon johnston for the use of his music yeah and thanks to you guys for listening we sure do appreciate you bye-bye be safe out there kids